Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to show you the setup that I used the other day for the uh, game textures tutorial when I was using uh, hair particles. And so I have a somewhat of a setup in here on this. I'm using, a, here I have a particle system, and here's a cube that I'm emitting from the particles. In fact, if you can see it as it's emitting in white, it's because in here I have a color ramp set up with these various colors. And see how it's changing the colors as it goes through here. But we're going to do a, we'll change this into a hair particle system because if you take a look at the node editor in here I'm using particle info in this case I'm just going to get rid of that and then we'll just turn this into hair particles here so let's leave here a lot of times if you're doing this you can't see the colors if you're just here in material mode so you have to go into render mode to be able to see it so if that throws you that's one of the reasons to do it so let's go take a look over here at the particle system itself and we'll just change this up so from an emitter we're going to turn it into a hair particle it's like look at those things it's like is it really emitting that giant thing like that okay let's we'll fix that up hair length well that's part of the problem we'll turn that hair length way down and then let me see maybe I won't have any children in here I don't have any vertex groups in here, though I've showed you that. Here I am emitting. Actually, I work back and forth between hair and the emitter to make it work, right? So I have in here, here's my normal set in here. Here's my type of physics that I have set in here. And here's where I pick my material that I might use as well. Because if I don't, if I use just this material in here and don't have an object, it's going to, like, let's get rid of this object in this case like that and I'll let's grow some hair particles let's go back to the hair particles there and we can see there they are up here like this but let's change this to in this case let's emit from the face and I'm gonna just now I'll tell you let's emit from the here but let's go in yeah you see I want that guy I'm gonna subdivide it so I'll emit from the vertices, but I'll just subdivide it so there's a lot more vertices. That way it'd be pretty dense little mesh like that. Okay, and then, oh yeah. And so there's only a few, but that's because we got to crank this up. So we'll just put a few in here for starters. Yep, that'll be all right. So then we turn that into here. There it is like that. All right, so there's the hair particles growing out here from the hair setting. And let me see. I don't care about the display. I'm not going to add any children. The field weights I can ignore for now. Force field settings. Vertex group. I do use this a lot. I use the vertex, the density for the vertex group. In fact, I ought to show you that because that's really important if you're not familiar with it. I know a lot of you are, but this is a kind of for new users. So if I go over here to this upside down triangle, like this and I go into edit mode there's all my vertices like this and if I just want the hair to grow out of one area I'm going to turn all these off like this and I'm just going to get take my C brush I'm just going to paint this one little section in here like that and I'll leave it and I'll escape that and then I'm going to get a vertex group and maybe I'll call that you know circular hair and that's weight of one so I'm going to assign that one I'm going to press control I select the inverse and I'm just going to assign that zero that a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually make a new vertex group for this zero weighted area as well that way I can select both in fact let's do that let's call I'll just call this the zero group and assign it like that. That way when I press A and deselect everything, if I have the zero group, I can select just those. If I have the circular hair group, I can select... Oh, oh no. Did I do... How did I do that? Must have did, must have done something. I must not have assigned that. Let's just do it again. There's that group. That's going to be one. I'm going to assign it. Okay, so now let's see, make sure the zero group selected and the circular group selected what 
is that all about? Okay, it didn't like it. The zero group select. Okay. Circular. That's I'm gonna do control I, that's circular assign. Okay, now let's select the circular. Okay, press A. Let's select the zero group. Select okay, that's normal. It's back to working. Okay, let's leave that. And we'll go back into object mode. Okay, so there's back to our hair particles. So then since I have the circular group like that, then within here I come down to this density and just pick that circular group. And then it only emits from there. This is really, really useful, right? Or I can just go pick the zero group. Uh, then the zero group's not going to work because that had a setting of zero. All right, so I have that set up here. All right, so there's our particles. Now we still need, we want to color these things. Let me see, I'll turn this off. I want to strand render it and then I don't see my hair particle settings so like, like the other video you have to come over here and come up here and go to experimental mode like this and then down here then I'll have cycles hair rendering available I'll use standard numbers which are pretty common 0 0.03 for the base of it and 0 0.02 for the tip and then I'll use ribbons just to keep it simple and then you notice I like to change the number of degrees that it's going to change. Let's just change that anyway. Like this. All right. And then. Okay. So now I need nodes. Let's go into the nodes. So basically, it's using this green color for this surface, but I actually want a material for, for the particles themselves. So I basically want another material that's different from that green. So maybe I'll just make one up here. So I'm going to make it red. And then with this selected, I have to come down here and select that material. Where is my material? That's you got to go back to the emitter section right there. And then down here is my material down here somewhere, material 2 that I want to use. Okay. So then I'm going to go to the hair. All right, so now this is going into here. That's going into there. Let's see if what it looks like in render. I'm in cycles render. Let's render and see if that. Nope, don't see it yet. Don't see it yet. So I must be forgetting something, but I don't think so. Let's see what material. Oh, material five. Three and five. Okay. So I must have other materials in there. Back to the hair. Go get material. Where is my material again? Okay, let's try that. I don't see my hair being rendered yet. What's its problem? Key ribbon cycles hair. Okay. Uh -huh. There they are, starting to show up like that, right? Just barely see them. So let's make these. There they are if you look in really close. Let's, I guess we're going to have to crank those up a little bit. Let's just make it 0 0.5 and 0 0.3. All right, so now we're starting to see them show up. So there's my hair rendering showing up and then come over here to this node in the node editor. Uh, you're going to have to come in and now with current versions, older versions when you came in it would set over here on this and you wouldn't see the, you'd see the render layers and the composite. Now by default you have to cl click this sphere in order for your nodes to show up. So now let's go get the hair input node, hair info like that. I'm going to need that and because I want to make a ramp of colors like I was showing you the other day and then I need my hair, I need my uh, converter up here. Here's my color ramp node in here like this. So then it's just a matter of connecting the color ramp to the color. And then in this case, uh, the hair info, let's use the intercept node into here. So then I'm going from black to white or whatever color you choose. In fact, let's use another color. I'll go into here. I want to put another color in stream, so I'll put 
click add you can barely see the dotted line right in here but now I have a hold of it so I'll click that change that to orange there we go and now you can already see the colors taking place and that black black is not really a great color of course for us artists types so at the very least I'm going to turn that into maybe a dark bluish purple instead okay so we're getting closer so now our rendering is taking place last thing to do of course is we want to go over here to the sample let's crank up the number of samples on it and see what it's going to look like so, oh I get my preview set way down from the previous lesson so let's just set that up to here 50 and let's just see what happens it's in preview mode so it's working away now six seven eight let me zoom out just a little bit of course this background color doesn't help here this being purple but all right, I'll just let it run I think you'll get the idea but that's how you do the color ramps within cycles and um, if you're still working in blender render I have a video on that as well that I've done it but cycles does a great job and it looks really nice and um, I forgot to cover that step in the video the other day okay well that's it for now and I'll see you in the next lesson.